Hello guys, good evening. So this is what was proposed to be today. A short webinar that I will address the question of carbohydrates and fat in our diet and their effects on body composition or body composition changes because this is something that I have struggled with for quite a long time because I wanted to know like what is it? Is it carbs that make it inherently or make us inherently fat? Is it fat that makes us fat? What is it? So I want to describe and go through some science that we have and to provide you with information so you can actually make better choices, not fall for diet fat and make better decisions all in all and live a healthier, happier life. You know, probably you will release a lot of stress as a result of this. So just before we start, not all of us or not all of you know me. So my name is Daniel and I'm a nutrition coach. I'm an athlete. I run Spartan races, which is like obstacle course races. And I also do trial, trail running and I contributing in form of like blogs, videos, and also in form of um, articles to Spartan Race Slovakia and the Slovak Association for Nutrition and Prevention. So that's where you can find me. So let's start. We'll start by going over some basics of uh, prote uh, sorry, carbohydrates and fat. What are the differences? What are the commonalities? And then I will just mention some studies to show what is important. And then we will conclude by uh, giving like practical applications of these things so you can make better choices. Uh, when we think about our diets, like we currently eat most of our food which is like balance. We don't eat only fat. We don't eat only carbohydrates. And people have like different composition of that food. And the, some of them are constantly trying to solve that issue. Like, which is better? Should I, should I eat more fat? Should I eat more carbohydrates? So let's look at these first in isolation. So fat, as you know, or probably know, uh, contains about 9 calories per gram. It is an essential macronutrient, which means that we need to have it in our diet in order to survive. And its roles, well, actually it has several roles. One of them is like insulation of our body organs, but also nervous system. It is involved in hormone production like for example testosterone, um, it is involved in absorption of vitamins, so these fat soluble vitamins that we need to get like A, D, E and K. And it also provides us with quite a lot of energy, like 9 calories per gram, and it is preferentially stored as fat in our bodies. And maybe you also know that fat carries the taste. And that's quite interesting point because if you are into cooking, you know that, or you might know that saying, fat carries the taste. And oh, just recent research, like it was, uh, I think, from last year 2020 or earlier this year 2021, uh, that shows that actually there we have some kind of fat receptors on our tongues. So it's not like something specific or, or I mean something different, but we actually have taste receptors for fat, which is really new. On the other hand, we have carbohydrates and carbohydrate sources are usually like four calories per gram. They are not essential, so our body can create it from, for example, from stored fat. And the role is that it is the main source of energy for us. So anytime we have carbohydrates avail available, we thrive on them. And they are 
necessary for sports performance. We'll go into that later. Um, usually carbohydrate sources also carry fiber. Fat sources don't necessarily need to. And they're full of phytonutrients because carbohydrates are only from the plant-based or plant sources. So like fat can be from both animal and plant sources. Um, the main role is actually of the carbohydrates is actually the immediate energy source. So they give us energy immediately. Uh, and this will be important when I will be speaking about that later. So just keep that in mind. And carbohydrates has the power to alter our mental and physical state. So you might know that, that it's pretty good pre-workout to get carbohydrates. Because it doesn't only provide you with energy, but fast, quickly digesting carbs can actually act on your brain not only on your stomach <laughs> and it can just kick you um, I mean motivate you physiologically and in endurance sports we know like there is a mouthwash which is basically carbohydrate solution that you just rinse your mouth you don't even need to ingest these carbs and you get energy from that so what are the commonalities of fat and carbohydrates in our diet? So the common thing is that they are not created equal, which means that quality matters. When we have, when we speak about whether it's fat or carbohydrates, what is important to always keep in mind is that the quality of those uh, sources of food. And because you can have like highly processed, Fats, like for example, canola oil, soybean oil, less processed, like uh, extra virgin kind of oils, or in its natural forms, which can be avocado, avocado, walnut seeds, or maybe some animal fat. On the other hand, carbohydrates, we know like it can be fruit, it can be whole grains. Or starches like sweet potatoes, potatoes, and my favorite legumes. But we can also have like highly processed carbohydrates such as toast, or white bread, white flour, uh, which have a different physiological effect on us. But in the end, it is like calorie, right? It's always one gram of glucose is or sugar is. 4 calories per gram, it doesn't matter how highly processed it is. Uh, what, is what do they also have in common is that they are both part of a healthy diet, so we should not exclude one or the other. And sometimes people, especially nowadays, the carbohydrates have a bad reputation. Well, I don't think this is deserved as we will see also later. And it's usually those highly processed carbohydrate sources or fat sources that are bad for us from the perspective of health, but also from the perspective of um, how it make, make us um, gain weight, lose weight, manage our weight. And interesting thing is that our taste preference whether we favor in our diet uh, if we favor more carbohydrate rich diet or fat rich diet is different between people and the difference comes from usually our childhood or from upbringing so we usually tend to favor foods that we uh, grown up on so there is a huge cultural aspect in our food preferences and choices. Therefore, for example, if you live in a culture that uh, is like most of their traditional foods are rich in carbohydrates, 
it can be very hard to switch to ketogenic diet, right? I mean, switching to ketogenic diet is an um, extreme example. Uh, and it is hard for anybody, but I think you get the point. On the other hand, like if you come from a high fat diet culture, um, then switching to, let's say, 80-10-10 with like 80% carbohydrate diet might not be very beneficial for you. And the last point is that, or commonality is that none of them is inherently fattening, as you will see. So basically, there is a lot of research that goes into weight loss. And there is a lot of research that compared these diets that are rich in carbohydrates and rich in fat. And we have a, I mean, strong, undeniable evidence that it doesn't matter whether we have a diet rich in carbohydrates or in fat, you can lose weight on both of these diets. Um, so, important point here is that not even genetics play a role in that when it comes to our physiological ability to lose weight. The difference is more from the mental perspective. So, there are people who have like preference for carbohydrates, they have preference for fats, the, the, there are people who have problem moderating their hunger, which is genetic or genetic component, but it has nothing to do with the actual macronutrient, so where it is, whether it is fat or carbohydrate. So just keep that in mind. And like a superstar, a researcher in this area is Kevin Hall, who conducted several studies in metabolic ward. Metabolic ward studies are actually these kind of studies when you put people into a room, when they are controlled, they live there, they can, uh, they have all food prepared for them, so you control everything you can, and you can make a clear distinction, like if this one thing uh, contributes to, for example, to obesity or to weight gain, we can easily pinpoint that. It's very expensive, but it can be done. So, is carbohydrate or fat better for weight loss or for body, body composition? Um, when we look at it from long perspective, so over 12 months, there is really very, very insignificant difference. The differences come mainly from the first weeks or first month or up to six months period, where there is a slight advantage for low carbohydrate diets, but it doesn't really improve body composition. It's just that you lose more water and you look more cut, right? But that is also motivating for many people. So, yeah. Uh, but after like six months, it really is no, not difference. So there might be slight advantage if you are just making a quick cut, like if you are a bodybuilder or something like that, but definitely not for a long time perspective solution. In the end, after the diet, what I constantly say is that it's not only about losing weight, but then you also need to maintain that weight afterwards. And this is what is most problematic for, for people. So you'd better start or do a diet that you can sustain also afterwards. So you learn these skills, you learn how to manage food. And so there is a basically easy transition. So you are not drastically changing your diet to lose weight and getting back to your previous diet and gain weight back doesn't make sense, right? But this is a mistake many people do. Anyway, let's continue. And there seems to be actually a slight advantage in um, high carbohydrate rich diet for body composition. And I will explain that later why that might be. Um, 
And as I mentioned, the several studies by Kevin Hall that show that, for example, when they compared the two diets, that was like a low-fat diet and low-carb diet, so the weight loss was about 1 to 2 kilograms, actually over two weeks period. However, the low-fat diet led to a greater reduction of fat mass, while the low-carbohydrate diet led to greater reduction in fat-free mass. But the fat-free mass lost could be mostly water, not muscle, so it's not really conclusive and there is not much uh, transition into real life or from the, again, the real life perspective, it doesn't matter whether you go low carb or low fat, do what you can or what's better for you, what you can adhere to better. Uh, then there is also another study from Kino, but this was from 2015. And they show that calorie for calorie dietary fat restriction results in more body fat loss than carbohydrate restriction in people with obesity. So, yeah, a lot of this research is in people with obesity, so that would be different than in lean people. Another study from 2018 from Christopher Gardner, again, in people in obesity, uh, shown that decreasing dietary fat leads to greater body fat loss than cutting the same number of calories from carbohydrates. So there seems to be the same story, you know, we cut carbohydrates, we cut fat from our diet and it seems that there is something behind that's not only about calories, but maybe also about micronutrient composition. And keep in mind that all of these studies that I picked were equated for protein, so the protein was not different. And here might be why. So we have oxidative priority and thermic effect of food. Probably you don't know about oxidative priority and it says that like we have alcohol, we have protein, carbohydrates and fat. And we, when we eat these uh, micronutrients in our diet, we don't eat micronutrients in isolation. The only probably exception is if you eat uh, protein powder, right? And even protein isolate is 90% uh, protein, it's not pure protein. So, when we eat a mixed meal that contains carbohydrates, it contains fat, it contains proteins in different ratios, uh, these macronutrients will be processed in different way with a different priority. So, first of all, uh, protein will be processed and stored. So, protein is broken down into amino acids and these amino acids are either used right away, um, for example, to repair muscles, or to produce more muscle, or the amino acids are broken down and some are stored in amino acid pools. So there's like storage of amino acids, which is very limited. So it's really insignificant. Then we have carbohydrates, which are uh, oxidated or processed as the second macronutrient. And they are processed primarily for energy. So, um, as I said in the beginning, carbohydrates are used for immediate energy, as an immediate energy source. They are not, or our body doesn't like to store them as fat. And the fat in the diet, yeah, it is preferentially stored as fat. So, in practical application, what it means? Should, does it mean that you should avoid fat because fat is stored as fat? Well, no, because even if you eat like 18, 10, 10, which is like 80% carbohydrate diet, you are still eating enough fat to gain weight as long as you are in a caloric surplus. So once again, what really matters is whether we are in caloric surplus or caloric deficit, so energy balance matters the most. 
Then, however, what is also important to note is macronutrient composition. And this is the second uh, most important thing when it comes to weight loss pyramid or importance of body weight changes. Here is why. It actually affects of our satiety. So there are different mechanisms of satiety. Some are mental and some are physical. So physical mechanisms are volume. We have stretch receptors in our stomachs. So if you drink a lot of water, for example, you will have a full stomach, right? It stretches out. If, if you eat one liter of water, you will have full stomach, but you will still be hungry if you are hungry, right? Because it doesn't provide you with nutrition necessary. So things like calories, micronutrients, and macronutrients. So the macronutrient composition of food so we need to get protein, we need to get fat, that is essential, and we don't need to get carbohydrates necessary from our diet, but we will still crave them. So this can happen, for example, you can notice that, that if you have like low protein meal, you will be eating quite a lot, but and you will feel like your stomach is full, but you are still craving something. The same thing actually you can observe when you are on a very low fat diet. So that is why you should not be really avoiding fat in your diet. And I noticed that first on myself, that led me actually to research this later. And I was like really on a high carb diet, I had enough protein but I was drastically re reducing fat so it was about 10% of my calories in that sense and it was more than what I would physiologically need so my physiological needs of essential fat was already covered it was more than half gram per kilogram of body weight but I was not satisfied with my meals even though they were enough in calories but once I increased that ratio of fat in my diet, I noticed the cravings went away. So this is also something to keep in mind. And the third mechanism or the third part of the physical mechanisms of satiety is also micronutrient content, so vitamins and minerals. And this is also important. So when we speak uh, what we can notice with highly processed food, they are calorie dense. So, I don't know, some kind of chocolate that is highly processed, like combination of sugar and fat. Uh, it's not very nutrient dense, right? It's only caloric dense. You can eat a lot of it and it doesn't give you a lot of volume for calories, right? It doesn't give you a lot of nutrients for calories. And it certainly doesn't provide you with protein <laughs> or very limited protein. So that is why it is easy to eat a lot of it without really feeling satisfied. Then there is also mental mechanisms. Or there are mental mechanisms of satiety, which are um, basically our food choices and cravings. And as I mentioned previously, um, specifically carbohydrates and fast carbohydrates like sugars affect our um, cravings so because they actually act on our brain so simple sugars and high fat diets in combination actually can alter our um, mind uh, alter our brain so that is something to keep in mind so you can definitely be physiologically like quote unquote addicted to this kind of food and the food choices what I mean by that is that if we have limited food choices we get satisfied with that and the more food choices we have the more we tend to eat so that, that is what we can observe in any kind of diet like as long as you limit food choices you will experience less hunger and uh, it's also called the buffet effect. So if you go to like buffet where you have 20 or 30 different meals, you are more likely to eat 
uh, you know, a little bit of this, a little bit of that, and uh, overall eat more than if you had only rice. So there is also like this palate fatigue, it's called. So if you eat just one food, whatever it is, you get fed up with that certain meal or certain food quite fast and you are not willing to eat more. So to wrap it up, what is important? What is applicable? It doesn't really matter like if we have um, food that is rich in or your diet that is rich in carbohydrates or rich in fat, from the physiological perspective, um, it doesn't matter. Calorie is calorie. You should, however, eat food that is as close to nature as possible. So that means limit highly processed foods, because highly processed foods contain a combination of sugars, combination of highly processed oils, and they make you hungrier. And that's basically, there is no like physiological mechanism that would make you inherently fat based on macronutrients, but it actually uh, can make you hungry, can, ma can alter your appetite. So what we are playing with here when we speak about macronutrients proportions as long as you are covering your bases of protein needs, fat needs, then it's more about your preferences and about your appetite. And one interesting thing is that regardless of our short-term choices, so for example, if I chose to uh, start ketogenic diet tomorrow for because I want to get super cut within one month, for example, Regardless of our short-term choices, over the long-term people tend to gravitate towards a balanced diet. That means, in general, it's about 50% carbohydrate, about 30% fat, and about 20% protein. So that's from me for you today. If you have any questions and comments, I will be happy if you share them below. And actually I started, I don't know if you noticed, uh, personal consultations that I provide to people. So this is not a, like coaching over several months that I do. This is just one time 30 minute consultation. If you need just some gentle push into some direction, you don't know where to start or how to continue, what to focus on, uh, what would move the needle to reach your goals, then reach me out and maybe check the link that I will post below this. Schedule your time with me. You will get a registration email. Just join the meeting. And then I will do my best to actually provide you with this information that will hopefully change your life as it has changed many of people that I consulted with. So you have a great evening and see you.